Good evening, parents and family members. Thank you for joining us this evening for our Indian River School District remote opening town hall meeting. We appreciate you, you joining us. I wanna introduce uh, some of the members of our panel here that are with us this evening that are gonna help uh, answer some of your questions. Uh, Ms. Our assistant superintendent, Mrs. Karen Blannard. Our director of finance, Ms. Tammy Smith. Our Director of Personnel, Mrs. Celeste Bunting. Our Director of Special Education, Dr. Judy Brittingham. <clears throat> Our Director of Secondary Education, Dr. Renee Jerns. And our Director of Elementary Education, Ms. Kelly Dorman. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Mr. Jimmy Wheatley and Mr. Charlie Ruggiero, who uh, have organized our town hall this evening, and we appreciate your hard work, and uh, we hope the, the families and community members are better informed after we are able to, to chat and share some information with you this morning. So with that, we will we'll move into our presentation. Uh, we have released a reopening and reimagining plan for a safe start to the school year, and it can be found in its entirety on our website, irsd.net, uh, at any time for you to review. I will say that this plan was developed after um, several months of planning from uh, individual committees, and we came together over the last couple months as one large committee to uh, work on our protocols in the areas that you see here in our agenda. So we've analyzed this, and we continue to fine tune uh, these areas in preparation for our, our staff next week and our students beginning the 17th. So you can see how our agenda has been broken down. So our first section is the fall 2020 return models and staggered opening. Uh, we're able to, uh, rem uh, to return remotely uh, based on our scenario number two. Our state has uh, provided us with three scenarios and we've been in scenario two for quite some time and we're, we're squarely there now. The data that we've been monitoring uh, is trending, it remains in this scenario too, which allows us to provide a, a hybrid model that we've developed that we'll discuss here this evening. These are our two models. I, I should say, uh, I just wanna remind those in attendance tonight that uh, we will be enabling the chat so you can ask questions. Uh, we're gonna, we have that disabled for the time being until we get through a couple of our sections and then we'll open the chat and you can, uh, we ask that you ask questions related to uh, the sections that we're reviewing now. Then we'll disable the chat again and go through the remainder of our program and then open the chat back up. So uh, the chat will be open. Uh, the two models that we are, are looking at right now for our school district are uh, remote academy and that's where students learn in a completely virtual uh, environment. Students will be assigned teachers and they will have class schedules. The learning will be synchronous and asynchronous. That's live and in-person uh, remote and also uh, asynchronous is where they can access uh, those lessons on their own time. Students will be provided feedback throughout the learning process from our teachers and staff and grades will indeed be calculated using the district grading policy. Those families uh, with us this evening who had students in our schools when we broke last March for the pandemic recognized that uh, we had to quickly turn to remote instruction and we recognize that uh, we can be doing a lot, thing, a lot of things better this, this time around through remote learning. So we've put a lot of time and energy into how remote learning would work to try to provide the best uh, environment for your students. So we will go through that uh, in greater detail, but we want you to know it will look differently than it looked uh, last spring. The IRSD hybrid model that students with a combination of in-person instruction and virtual instruction, and students will be assigned teachers and be provided class schedules. Learning again will be synchronous and asynchronous, focus on the same concepts and units as the remote, their remote academy peers, and students will be provided feedback throughout. And again, like the remote model, <clears throat> grades will be calculated using the district's grading policy. We are providing professional development for staff over the next uh, couple weeks. We did delay the start of the school year until September 17th, and that's an effort to ensure that our 
staff understand our safety protocols that are new and put in place for uh, the opening of schools and also so they understand and are fully aware of our various platforms that we're going to use to uh, share remote instruction. We also want to provide resources to our families and community as to how to best access our new learning. So that delay of about a week uh, will enable us to do that with our staff and students. Prior to the 17th, as I, as I mentioned, uh, students will receive class schedules uh, and important information about how to ex access necessary information and materials for the start of that school year. Okay, we've had a, a, a lot of questions around how this uh, the schedule will start this year. Uh, we understand that uh, there's many people in our community that uh, would like to go completely remote to start, and there's many people in our community that would like us to come back full time, all students in our classes, and we understand that there's uh, parents and community members that would like us to come back uh, more quickly than what we have proposed here, and we've, we've looked at a lot of variables when developing the roll-in process for our students. And we, we know that it's not uh, perfect for everyone, but we try to find some middle ground to slowly bring students back in in a safe manner and in a manner where our staff can provide the best possible remote environment for our students. We also had to consider our transportation and our safety protocols around uh, our, our riding on our buses, as well as our staffing needs that may uh, may come into, into play as we bring students back. So this model, although we know it's not preferable to all, it is the model that we think is the, the safest way to begin to bring students back in. We're gonna monitor that regularly. And if this needs to be adjusted, we certainly will take the, the calendar back to our Board of Education and allow them to consider a different role in process. Um, but without further, this, the, the, the process will start on the 17th. All students will get that remote instruction on the 17th, regardless of the, the grade level. So that remote will start on the 17th. However, in person, those that have elected the hybrid model will be pre-K, K and one, and that's the 17th and the 18th for our B cohorts. We have two cohorts of students. Half our students will come in on A days, and those are Mondays and Tuesdays. The other half of our students who are on the hybrid model will come in on B days. That's for our pre-K, through our middle schools, and I'll talk about our high schools in a second. But staying with September, uh, for these first two and a half weeks, uh, the, it, we will just be rolling in pre-K and first grade. Once we move into October, you'll see we roll in some additional grades beginning uh, on October 5th. Our second and third grade cohort A will come in on Monday and Tuesday, and cohort B will then be introduced um, on the 8th and 9th. You'll see we'll remain with that cohort for the following week, and then after that we will roll in the remainder of our elementary students, our fourth and fifth grade, and on the 19th we will also introduce sixth grade. We felt it important to allow sixth grade to come in for a week. Uh, they're going to, on their own, they'll be introduced to a new school, and we want to give them time to acclimate to that school without the seventh and eighth graders there. So that week of the 19th through the 23rd, it will just be sixth grade for our middle schools but we'll have a complete roll in of all elementary beginning that 19th. <clears throat> on the 26th, you'll see we will introduce uh, back our seventh and eighth grade students, cohorts A on Monday and Tuesday, and cohorts B on Thursday and Friday. As you see uh, on our calendar, Wednesdays will be a virtual day for all students. Once we move into November, you'll see November 9th, we introduce our ninth grade with the same premise, of a uh, allowing them to acclimate to the new high school uh, on their own for that week without the introduction of other, other students. And on the 19th, all additional students will roll in. And you'll see the 16th and 17th, pre-K through eighth, and then that ninth grade cohort. And then on the 19th, we will introduce all students back in the school that have elected to participate via the hybrid model. Again, the entire time, those students that are learning remotely, and those that have not been rolled in yet will continue to receive remote instruction. Moving into health and safety, we've put a lot of time and energy into monitoring the documents that we've received from the Department of Education, from, DO, from Department of Education, from Public Health. 
we do have, it's important to, to acknowledge uh, Dr. Conti, he's not with us uh, this evening, but he is our Delaware Public Health liaison. He's been instrumental in helping to guide our work around maintaining a, a health and safety, safe environment and uh, helping us to develop some procedures as we open up this fall. So face coverings, all staff and students in grades pre-K through 12 must wear a face covering. Uh, that includes on the bus, as you see there, the transportation, except during scheduled breaks. And we have built in breaks throughout the day for our students um, to, to uh, take down that face covering. We are recommending a two-ply face covering. Um, that, that is what is recommended at this time. Social distancing, so it's important to mention that uh, all the guidance that we've been given, uh, the, the focus is on face coverings and social distancing to minimize any spread. So that is the, the, the biggest focus that we've had. So there is that six foot distancing within the classrooms and as students move about the school. Individual schools will share their social, social distancing plans with their families uh, within the next week or so. Um, and that will be uh, also, if you're interested, DOE has uh, some social distancing guidelines on their website as well. And I believe we have a link uh, on our website. As I mentioned, Dr. Conti is partnering with us to ensure we're following all of our, our guidelines and have the most up-to-date information. Um, we are requesting that all students complete a health screening. And when we move to the next slide, you'll see what that health screening is. This is very important for our students to complete every day before leaving home in the morning. And it will help to ensure that they're coming to school each day uh, safely. Uh, there's a defined process from the Department of Health with regard to rapid response if a student is positive, and we will talk a little bit more about that later. The next slide does show you the screening, and this has been modified as the CDC has modified uh, their recommendations for the look fors when a student uh, may have symptoms. Cleaning protocols and, and ventilation, we've put a lot of time and energy around developing protocols for our schools, all, both for teachers, administrators, our custodial and maintenance staff. They all have checklists that uh, will be followed. We've made upgrades recently over the last couple of years to our HVAC systems, and those are in working great working order right now, and they are monitored by our trained technicians, and we have given uh, strict protocol to our staff. If there's ever is any issues with those HVAC systems we need, to know about those immediately, and we'll bring in the appropriate personnel to uh, analyze what may be happening. Uh, as you may have read, there's some, um, some recommendations about increasing airflow and outside air. Our HVAC systems are designed with dampers to bring in fresh air, and those will be adjusted as needed. Uh, but we, we need to keep in mind that as we open windows and doors to the outside, the outside environment obviously comes in, humidity, uh, cold weather, warm weather, and that can uh, sometimes do more harm than good. Uh, our systems are designed to uh, maintain a, a good environment throughout the school day, and the introduction of outside uh, elements can throw that off. So we, we are monitoring that through our internal systems. I won't read this lengthy bullet to you, but we will uh, stay on the screen for a couple minutes so you can see. Uh, our protocols and what we're doing. I will highlight <clears throat> our high touch areas are gonna be cleaned every 15 minutes to two hours. So our staff in our school will, will identify those areas and make sure they're addressed uh, accordingly. Hand washing stations will be available. Uh, playgrounds and athletic equipment are, are wiped down and we're using EPA approved disinfectants for our wipe downs. Um, signs will be posted in school. We've created videos one-page documents to help students with um, our expectations with social distancing, cleaning, hand washing, and mask wearing. Okay, and we'll move into student well-being. Nutrition serv services, there's been some questions about will meals continue? Yes, they will. Uh, we, meals will be pre-assembled. Uh, they'll be uh, in carry-out containers. They'll be available for students with, uh, students with documented food allergies, as we always have done. We'll make sure we accommodate those students. 
Our menus will be available on our website, irsd.net, and nutrition services website app. Some of you are familiar with those from the last year or so. We will have grab and go meals. The, some of our schools are utilizing their cafeterias and some are eating in the classrooms. It's where space is permitted and that's gonna be on a school by school basis. <clears throat> you will get more information about that in the coming weeks. Our, our kitchens, our lines, our cafeterias, we are cleaning and disinfecting those uh, regularly based on the EPA requirements. And uh, you can see some of the specifics are there. Uh, certainly our, our pickup lines, they are clean, clean regularly and we've installed um, plexiglass barriers to ensure safety for our students and our staff alike. Uh, one, of the, one of our most important uh, things we wanted to consider is our emotional and mental health for our students. We recognize students haven't been in school since March and that's, a, that's tough on kids. It's, uh, we, we know that schools are more than just uh, academics. Students come to school to uh, be connected and to have conversations with the, the staff and their, their peers and that's been difficult and we recognize that. So we have worked with our counseling team and increase services in those areas to try to meet the needs of our students when they return to us. Whether it's remotely or hybrid, we wanna make sure we are um, uh, meeting the students' needs, uh, social and emotional needs, staff uh, needs as well. We have staff available to support our own um, teaching staff and uh, all, all, all employees. Okay, I'm gonna pause there. Um, based on our agenda, if you have questions, of, of the things that we've talked about uh, thus far. Our panelists are coming on to the screen now and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have uh, that we didn't cover or if you just have some, some general questions that you're, you've been thinking about. So uh, as you ask, we will, we will individually address those. You will not be able to see the questions from the others. Uh, that feature's been disabled, but we will read each question and respond accordingly so you'll get to hear all the questions. So I'll be quiet for a minute and turn it over to our panelists. All right, so I'm going to read each question since we know that the participants cannot see the chat box. So the first question is, can my first graders wear a face shield instead of a mask? So based on the um, Delaware State Department guidelines, CDC and Department of Health, Face masks are required in all schools because they are um, a more protective measure in passing droplets from person to person. Now, if there is a documented medical condition, we could certainly explore a face shield, but the face mask is required and it does promote the, um, or it does limit the transfer of droplets where a face shield would not be able to do that. The second question, what happens when a parent works during the day and is not able to get their child on a live Zoom? So we will be um, having teachers record instruction for students as well, which is unlike what, what, what was happening in the spring, so that that can be accessed at any time convenient for you and your child. Do you try to keep siblings in the same cohorts? Yes. We are that doing that. Done. You mentioned cleaning in the library. How can that be done on the books? And so what we're um, planning on doing is having special area teachers come into classrooms to offer instruction for students. And if we are utilizing library books, we will be sanitizing them if we are sharing them among students. So we will have protocols in place, but we will be limiting probably the library book choice to make sure that we have tight cleaning protocols. In light of the governor waiting minimum hours, what is the end date and will the delayed start not be made up? What is the attendance policy? So attendance policy will be discussed in the next section. If kids are in the remote only option, will, there, will their teachers be from their home school? Yes. You mentioned that lunch will be prepackaged with milk placed inside. Will accommodations be made for those students who do not like milk? 
Yes, the, you can work with your building administration to make sure that your student has access to other stuff if they have a milk allergy or don't drink milk on their regular school days. The next comment says waiting minimum hours. I'm not sure. It goes uh, back to a previous question in light of the governor waiting minimum hours, but I'm still not sure what that means. I think it's supposed to say waiving minimum hours. Waiving minimum hours. So, okay. What, what is, is be being done for special needs students? So for special needs students, within the first month of school, we will be convening an IEP team for every special education student in our district, and we will be completing an individual recovery services plan, which means we will be looking at updated progress monitoring and determining what additional services does your child need for this school year, why we're in the hybrid or remote, whichever choice you had, we will also be scheduling um, lots of by appointments after school and weekend hours with transportation provided if needed to ensure that we get special education students the services that they missed in the spring and any services that they need additionally to kind of um, make up for that time. So it will be a very individualized plan for your student. How will we know which cohort we will be in? Phone calls will go home via alert now on September 1st is the plan right now. And that phone call will notify you of your student's cohort. What is the plan for safety and social distancing on the school bus? So we do have guidelines from the CDC and the Department of Health regarding social distancing and use of masks. If a student enters the bus without a mask, we will have them provided and then we will be cleaning the school bus between each bus run and we have protocols in place for that as well. What will a typical day for a fully remote student look like from start to finish? So a fully remote stu student will be afforded the same opportunities as a hybrid student and what this means is they will be provided two synchronous days of instruction and what that means is uh, they'll follow their class schedule, can log into a Zoom that will take place at the same time their peers might be in person in the classroom and um, can participate. That's two days a week with the asynchronous learning three days a week. Um, for Mrs. Dor Ms. Dorman, I didn't know if you wanted to add something to that for elementary. Well, it's the same for elementary. Um, we do want to add, though, that if your child is remote and is not able to participate, we will be recording those sessions so they could log in at a different time and see that, that live session that was held with the teacher. How is the screening questionnaire completed daily? Just honor code, or is this something that is turned in or done electronically? So we will be pushing the screening tool out to all of our families and our staff. We are asking folks to complete it, and if they do have any of the symptoms, you would report that to the school, which would be why you would be keeping your child home from school. We are not collecting the, um, the questionnaire, but we do want families to contact the school if their child is experiencing any symptoms. Can students or parents change their mind and choose to attend school in a hybrid model as opposed to remote? So there will be opportunity provided for a change in decision at a certain point during marking period one. However, at this point in time, we have had to very carefully plan out with our transportation department and with our building administrative teams, the social distancing counting for the number of students who have already signed up for hybrid. So while it would be easy for a hybrid student to switch to remote suddenly that would not be the case if someone is remote and wanted to come hybrid due to the social distancing guidelines. And what supplies will we need to get for hybrid students such as pencils, markers, or composition books? So I think many schools have started to post their supply lists and they've minimized those lists so that there are um, less supplies needed because we want to have minimal things that students are bringing back and forth. So I would check with your school because they have released those or will be releasing those. Will there be playground time for kindergarten and first grade students? There will be. Um, so there are guidelines around recess, and, but we will follow those guidelines and we are um, planning for students to be outside. Is the attendance policy going to be different this year? 
um, that is going to be addressed later on in this presentation. What if we want our children to remain remote learning due to medical needs? That is certainly an option that will always remain available to you. Will there be dividers between the desks in the classroom? There will not be dividers. However, the desks will all face in the same direction and they will be six feet apart from one another and we will require masks of all students and adults in the classroom. How do parents know who has cohort A or cohort B? What if I have students in different grades? So again, that phone call will be going out to parents on September 1st. And even if you have children in different grade levels, what has happened is we have tried to keep siblings scheduled for the same cohort. If for well, some reason, if for some reason you get information and that your siblings are not in the same cohort, we are allowing for changes due to siblings. So you just contact the school administration and the schools will work together to figure it out. Will siblings be scheduled in their cohorts together so they are going on the same days? Yes, we will do that. Okay, will computers be available to multiple students in the same home or only one per household? So we're gonna provide devices to each student as, as much as we possibly can, and that will be determined at the building level. Are middle school students automatically signed up for the hybrid model? Um, this was a parent decision, whether you chose remote or hybrid. However, we did indicate if we had not heard back from parents, we would assume hybrid so that we could plan accordingly for students return. How are outside equipment, swing, sliding boards going to be cleaned? So we will be creating schedules at the elementary level for outdoor play breaks. And then once a class finishes using the equipment, we will have a cleaning protocol that we put in place to clean all of the equipment. And so that will be co coordinated with our school-based teams and our custodians. Will nutrition service, service workers work five days a week like we would any other time, or is it going to be split up? Are we stationed at the schools where we were in the spring? Um, many questions about cafeteria staff. So I believe Mr. Toomey is working on those schedules and communicating them with his team, um, making sure that we have all schools adequately covered and util utilizing our staff in the most efficient way. So he will continue to communicate with that team. Is there an estimated date of a full return to school? So that will be dependent upon the governor's guidance. And so at this time we are offering the remote and the hybrid options. And then based on the governor's guidance that will deem when we have a full return to school because we're currently in scenario two right now. What will the procedures be for students that have an IEP? You will be hearing from your child's case manager um, in, over, the over the course of the next few weeks as, as, we, as the teachers return. And we will be scheduling an IEP meeting for every child to come up with an individual recovery services plan and ensure that we have a plan in place to get the students caught up that everybody at the IEP table is comfortable with. Will parents be notified if there are COVID cases in their students' class or in the school? If so, will there be mandatory quarantining? So the way this will work is whenever there is a confirmed case, we will immediately consult with our Department of Public Health liaison, and they will engage in contact tracing to look at students that may be near that child in a classroom situation, because we are trying to keep cohorts of students together as much as possible. If um, we do have contact tracing that occurs, we would be notifying members of that classroom of a case. We would not be sharing the name because that would violate HIPAA requirements. However, we would be informing families so that they could keep an eye out for any symptoms that their child may be experiencing and report that to the school. The, um, the CDC and the um, DPH liaison will also determine the quarantine um, stipulations and they will be communicating that directly with families or students impacted. 
We answered the question about supply lists. We will be pushing those out. Um, and then the question about will time be made up since the governor waived hours? So we so, will be looking at making that time up, correct? So the governor waived hours, however, um, also stated that students must receive a minimum number of instructional hours per day. So with the calendar and the delayed start, there have been adjustments in our regular calendar um, to make up for that time. And the calendar will be released to parents. How will high school students receive their textbooks for the first marking period? So most of our curricula is also online, so students will be able to access that. Um, uh, teachers will also provide copies of the text and materials needed through Schoology, and we still will be providing hard copies of materials as well. The schools will each design, design procedures for how to pick up those hard copy materials. How will working parents be able to have their kids watch hours and hours of Zoom videos at night, especially young children like first graders? So we have um, adapted schedules and paced out what our curriculum is going to look like. So I don't think it's going to be hours and hours. And I know it's a struggle, um, but we will be posting things for students to view. Um, and we just ask that you know you make your best attempts, um, but teachers will be working with families if students um, are struggling to do that. How often and how long will the Zoom meetings be for hybrid model for kindergarten students? So the, if you're in a hybrid, you won't ha have Zoom meetings because you're going to be in person with the teacher. So if you're in an AA group, you will attend Monday and Tuesday. You will possibly have activities, and you will have activities to do Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday if you're in that AA cohort. And the videos, teachers are being trained um, next week and the following around what is appropriate lengths of videos for students to log into and watch. How long will children have to wear masks before getting a break? This will certainly be developmentally appropriate, but at all levels, we are recommending mask breaks. And we do want teachers to be able to use their exercise or exercise their judgment based on the um, developmental level of the students. We do have them built into the schedule and we are recommending them throughout the day. If we choose remote learning for the first marking period, and then we choose, can we then choose to do hybrid for the second marking period? Yes. Yes, so as we near the end of the first marking period, we will be revisiting with all parents to see if they would like to change their selection if we have to remain in this model. Can my kids pack lunch? Yes, they may pack their lunch. When will we know the schedule for the virtual days so we can plan for working parents? We need to know as soon as possible. So all families will be notified of their students' um, days, their cohort, which will determine which days they would attend in person. Otherwise, everything will be available online, um, both synchronously and asynchronously. And th that notification for cohorts will go out on September 1st. Why are the middle school... Sorry, one minute warning on questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Why are the middle schools and high schools empty until October and November? Why not start them by school, not district? So again, to, um, to just recap some of Dr. Owen's comments, it was really important for us to ensure that our remote learning and our quality of instruction was rigorous and standards-based. And that really is in the event that we have to move to scenario three where we need to close schools, we wanna make sure that that instruction is sound. We also want to ensure the safety of all of our students and our staff. We know of, of other areas around the United States where we've opened quickly and then we've had to quickly close. So the idea is to do this in a very structured way to make sure that we are maintaining all of our health and safety protocols. We're closely monitoring any cases that may occur and then we're also ensuring the gradual roll-in allows for no interruption with instruction. Will Zoom meetings be available for the children who have seen the counselor at school for wellness checks? 
Yes, we will be providing virtual counseling if you have chosen a, the remote model. I have five students from seventh through first grade. Will they get Chromebooks and Wi-Fi maybe is part of the question? So all schools, all grade levels will offer devices to the families who need them. And um, our state is currently working on providing broadband, um, which would allow for internet access across the state, especially in those areas who don't have it. <clears throat> Thank you. So we'll, we'll stop at this time to allow um, Dr. Owens to continue, and then we can certainly pick back up where we left off with your questions. Thank you, uh, families and community members. Those are great questions and, and we appreciate those. Thank you, panelists, for your responses. Uh, we will go through the next uh, few slides, then we'll join back at the, the chat. We are going to answer as many of those questions as we, as we can. So uh, I'll, I'll go uh, somewhat through some of these slides so we can get back to that. <clears throat> Our next section is IRSD instruction. Uh, as you can see, we want to try to provide a more robust environment, certainly remotely, than we were able to uh, when we broke in March. But we want to. We are going to be using our uh, standards-driven instruction. Standards will be used. This will be new instruction based on the grade level and the uh, in which the students learning. We'll provide all students with meaningful opportunities to engage with their peers and teachers. I will also provide digital and hard copies when needed. And students will have, we've talked a lot about synchronous, that real-time learning and asynchronous uh, opportunities that's more self-paced that you log in and do um, on your own. Uh, we'll also provide meaningful uh, feedback and assessments throughout our process. It's important to note that students will be accountable for new learning. Um, the research has, has told us that uh, we recognize that students will have some gaps from where we broke in March, but we want to make sure that we are picking students back up where they should be with new learning, and we are working with them to bridge any gaps that we may find through our uh, intervention processes. So uh, new learning will be occurring once we return. We will have an attendance policy. Uh, we've, we've looked at this closely. Uh, the attendance will be monitored in several ways. Uh, you can see the three bullets there through participation in school facilitated virtual meetings and instruction um, through online district approved platforms uh, through we'll monitor the logins and participation reports and completion of assignments and assessments whether submitted electronically or hard copy and you can see if a student is sick in the hybrid uh, they can and cannot attend in person we will provide that remote learning environment for them um, if they need to remain at home Special education guidance, we can uh, go into greater detail if you have questions around this, but we do want to ensure that IEPs are uh, adhered to each for each of our special education students. During the first week of the school year, uh, your child's special education case, case manager and related service providers will be conducting an in-depth review of uh, the student's current data, assessing goals, uh, updated progress monitoring, and the team will be developing plans to support our students with disabilities. We talked a little bit about our schedules. I'll pause here so you can see uh, what a typical synchronous schedule will look like uh, for students and an asynchronous schedule. These are just examples. Uh, our school-based teams will develop, be developing uh, with our teachers schedules that best meet the needs of their particular students in those individual grade levels in those particular content areas. As you'll see in the top schedule, um, students in the high schools are not on that AABB schedule. They are on an ABCD schedule. So a quarter, quarter of the students will be in each day uh, to accommodate our social distancing and to ensure we have a, a good, safe environment. Students will be given their cohort uh, here in the next couple weeks. Hard copy options, while we know that this is not the best option and that we're exploring uh, our online capabilities, we will talk about uh, technology here soon. Uh, hard copies will be available to those who need them or want them, and we have protocol around uh, safety associated with those uh, sending and receiving those as well. We 
we can move right into technology for remote learning. Uh, as some of our families are aware, we, we did use Chromebooks last year. Uh, those are the devices that we were able to best support through our various platforms, and we feel we can continue to support those. Uh, we provided some uh, data there, approximately 3,100 Chromebook devices were distributed uh, last uh, spring, and uh, we found that to be uh, very successful. We appreciate the families that um, were able to utilize those and uh, get those back to us so we could ensure they were um, taken care of and updated for the start of the school year. Internet access, our local libraries within our municipalities are offering uh, Wi-Fi access, and we are continuing to offer Wi-Fi at our two high schools. Uh, while we know that that is not ideal, uh, those are some options that are available. If we go to the next slide, we, have, um, we are working with the state Go back one more, Mr. Wheatley, there we go. We are um, continuing to work with the state and local vendors to see where uh, additional services can be provided. Um, and we will continue to do that to try to offer better services to our families. And we'll go ahead and wrap out transportation, then we can focus our energy on our questions. Uh, as we had indicated before, our buses do have similar uh, cleaning criteria that uh, we are following the Delaware Department of Health with that criteria. Uh, you'll see buses, we typically have 72 passenger buses. We can only accommodate uh, based on the criteria that we've been given, 23 students on those buses at this time. And uh, that staggered seating, we will mark the area on those bus seats where the students uh, will need to sit and we'll do our best to uh, ensure that they're uh, seated where they need to be. Also, we will be cleaning down high touch areas, the tops of seats, our handrails, those things. And as some of our buses do have multiple runs, some up to three runs, uh, between each run, the entire bus is cleaned down with the, um, the solution that's been identified through uh, the EPA that's acceptable. And so those will be cleaned before an additional run is made. Students will need to wear their mask while on the bus. And if students, this goes for school, and our classrooms and the buses. If uh, students forget a mask, don't have one, we will have masks available at the school to provide uh, our students. I think I uh, discussed this, but again, uh, our buses will be cleaned after each run and uh, wiped down to ensure the best possible uh, safe, safety for our students uh, who are riding those buses. Okay, again, I'll, I'll pause there. I went pretty quickly. We will open the chat back up <laughs> and pick back up. I will remind um, our folks listening in, if you could, um, try not to be redundant with the questions. I know you can't see the questions as they're coming through uh, with the, the chat, but uh, uh, we'll try to get through as many of these as we can. Okay, we're going to continue where we left off. So will kindergarten evaluations be done prior to the start date? Not prior to the start date. As we do every year, um, we do uh, screen students when they come in K to five. And so we will use that information that we get from the screeners to address students' needs during small group instruction. What are the mass breaks for students going to look like? So we're building them into the schedule. We are recommending that they occur outdoors. And the recommendation is that students are six feet apart from one another and masks are off for a time period of five to 10 minutes just to continue to ensure to our, our safety protocols. But again, um, we'll build them in as much as needed to make sure that those breaks occur. My Wi-Fi isn't sufficient. Will you provide hotspots? <coughs> We do not have the capability for individual hotspots right now. Uh, we are continuing to look at providers. And uh, if you are in an area where you have limited uh, connectivity, if you can contact your school, uh, they'll get you in touch with the appropriate technology staff and we'll see if we can assist you with uh, where to uh, maybe get some connectivity. Will students be using lockers at the middle I do apologize, school? And you know, that's a, an issue that we continue to to work with our local providers to try to provide uh, opportunities. Sorry about that. 
Will students be using lockers at the middle school and high school level or will they be permitted to carry backpacks? So students at the secondary level will be permitted to carry backpacks. Um, locker situations might create crowding situations, so we, go we are going to allow for the use of backpacks. How will the drop-off and pick-up be handled for those children not riding the bus? So currently our administrators are working on safety protocols for arrival and dismissal, so they will have markings in place, they will have procedures in place, that they will be sharing with families so that you're informed with the um, one-way traffic flow into the building and then um, when you're leaving the building and as students are moving throughout the hallways. So on hybrid and remote, it's okay if you don't make it to the live as long as you complete the assessments and view the recordings. Yes, so as Dr. Owen shared in the presentation, attendance can count in three different ways. Obviously, a student is in attendance if they're a hybrid student and in person. If they're a remote student, um, attendance, and even on remote days for hybrid students, attendance can be counted if a student logs in to the appropriate platform in asynchronous learning. And we have the ability to check participation logs and log in records and we will use those to mark a student present. A student will also be marked present when completed and expected assignments are submitted. For remote students, do we have to send school supplies or can we wait until they attend school? You can wait until they attend school to send in the school supplies. I know masks are required, but can they wear the type that goes around their neck and is pulled up over their nose? So they're called gaiters. And um, what we are uh, hearing from the Department of Public Health is that two ply masks are what would be required. And so if it is a gaiter, it needs to be two ply um, because that is going to be critically important to eliminate the spread of the droplets from person to person. We did have a question about the, the definition of two ply and it's just two layers. Um, if we can provide any more guidance, we'll make sure we push that out to our schools and make our families aware of it. But that's the guidance we've been given right now. Thank you. Will any extracurricular clubs be remote such as National Honor Society, et cetera, or are they canceled for now? So specifically to your question, yes, they can be held in a virtual situation through Zooms and all of our staff members are being provided with Zoom accounts. They just cannot happen in person at this time. What happens if you did not complete the survey? So if you didn't complete the survey um, or answer the alert now survey that has recently been sent out as well, then schools are going to automatically assign your child as a hybrid student, meaning for partial in person and partial remote learning. If that does not suit you, you may easily change that to remote. So we did that because it's not easy to flip from remote to hybrid because we've had to plan bus transportation routes and classrooms around social distancing. So um, in this situation, you can flip from hybrid to remote. What are you going to do if a child's mask becomes soiled due to a runny nose, saliva, sneezing, et cetera? We have um, a plethora of masks on hand. They are the ones that would be disposable at the end of a day. So if we have any of those situations, we will be able to provide a mask to the student. Will students be provided books and materials for hybrid and remote? So any materials, books that a student might need, we will do a dissemination process much like we did in the spring for devices. Um, but those materials will also be provided online. Um, most of our curricula also has online platforms as well. How, are, how is Howard T. Ennis doing their schedules? Howard T. Ennis is starting the year out following the same schedule as the district. So AABB cohort rolling in um, our autism two-year-old classroom, PK, K, and one at Howard T. Ennis. And then we will be meeting with individual families to determine the next phase in. How will school supplies be done? Typically in the younger grades, they share supplies. Mm -hmm. So we have worked with the principals. Um, students will not be sharing supplies. Um, so they will have their own you know, supply box. Um, we have also, with our curricular resources, such as in Benchmark, there is a um, 
reader that is their own that they can write in and that's sent home with each unit. In math, the district has bought individual manipulative kits that students will be supplied with and on, they will only be the ones using that. And it will come back and forth from school to home. Will math still be required for grades pre-K through three? Once one updated said lower grades won't be required to wear a mask. So they are required for all grade levels now and that was recently released in the governor's guidance. So we will be requiring masks and again, we will have masks available if a student forgets one. Um, why can't sixth and ninth begin on September 17th? I believe we've already answered that question, but again, safety is our number one priority. With pre-K usually being half day, how will that work with hybrid? They will still have half day. They will still have their, their cohort days, AA or BB, their half day schedule in hopes that eventually we can roll in more days. I also have a question for the children who don't have their lunches packed. Will they still get free or paid for lunch? And do they get to take their masks off in the cafeteria? So our building administration is working on social distancing in the cafeteria and other areas of the building. Um, they will be able to take off their mask to eat. We're going to ensure that social, social distancing is still um, in place. Students that get free and reduced lunch will still get free and reduced lunch as long as you turn in all those forms that you have to turn in at the beginning of the year. So start working on that right away when you get it. Um, and we'll be having a um, keyless system so that the students don't have to touch the touchpad to put their numbers in. When should parents let the school know if their child will be going remote? If you haven't notified the school, please do so as soon as possible because that really helps us with planning. Will all students go back in January or sooner? And will it be up to parents whether they go back or not? Could they possibly stay remote all year? So again, we will be following the most recent guidance that's provided by the governor and um, we will be monitoring the scenario situation within our district to be able to make those determinations. Will the remote learning students follow a cohort to participate in synchronized learning? So this will um, be very similar yet somewhat different at the elementary and secondary levels. In the secondary schools, remote learning students will have an opportunity to engage with their hybrid peers on select days. So they are gonna be designated a cohort as well. And at the middle school level, that will be cohort A or B, and at the high school level, A, B, C, or D. And at the, element you. And at the elementary level, um, students will, the remote students will be divided um, once the teachers get their list into an AABB group so that the groups are smaller and, and the teachers are able to address students' needs um, through that remote instruction. Thank you. Can the weekly schedule of work to be completed be activated by Saturday so we are able to prepare prior to Monday like the last time? So uh, we are working with teachers and we have um, professional development at the beginning of the year where we will be designing schedules and making recommendations for presenting the asynchronous and the synchronous learning. And of course that includes being flexible with families of when they need those materials and such. Will children have unexcused absences if they are out for COVID? No. So um, as in any situation, a doctor's note is a documented absence, and that would automatically be excused in our school district. And if it's a situation where you, your child is symptomatic and you do not feel safe sending them into school because of those symptoms, then please just contact the school nurse who will work with you to make sure that the absence does not hurt your child. Thank you. Will students be required to have COVID-19 testing done before school? So we will be pushing out the self-assessment that is recommended by the Department of Public Health. And we're going to ask parents to use that screening tool every day with their children. And if their child is exhibiting symptoms, we will definitely want you to keep your child home and notify the school so that they're aware and then we will keep in touch with you to make sure that we're monitoring your child's health and well-being. What will happen if someone, staff or student, gets COVID? So if we have a case that is confirmed, we will immediately consult with our Department of Public Health liaison 
And that person will guide us in the work where we will engage in contact tracing to look at others that may have been in close proximity to the student or adult who has been um, diagnosed with COVID. Um, we will notify parents of students in that classroom. We cannot disclose the name of the student or the adult, but we can let parents know that someone in that space has contracted COVID because we would want you to keep an eye on any symptoms that your child may be experiencing and of course immediately um, relate that information to the school nurse. The um, Department of Public Health will also determine who is to be quarantined if a case like this should happen and we will follow their guidance and of course we would communicate with families um, where it would be applicable. Do students have to go through pre-screening evaluation prior to kindergarten if they have not been in school before? They will not. Um, we will screen all students once school has started, so that will provide us with valuable information so that we are able to address students' needs. Will students who do fully remote learning have, have this time with the same teachers when school resu resumes normally, so will they have the same teachers, and will remote learning students get a chance to meet their teachers? Great question. So at this time, since we cannot hold open houses in person due to the gathering uh, uh, guidance that's been provided, um, schools will be holding virtual open houses. Um, so your teachers and your building administration should be in touch with a schedule reg regarding that. And will they have the same teachers if and when school resumes normally? The hope is, is that the way we've been working to design these schedules, that that will be the case. So the, does this mean the seventh and eighth grade students in cohort A will start attending school on October 26th? Can someone verify that date? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Today's modification said three feet. Will you go three feet now? So the, um, the recommendation has been six. The requirement has been three. We're erring on the side of caution and safety. And so we are going to do our best to follow the six feet requirement. With the possibility of spreading excuse, COVID. Excuse well, me, Ms. Blanner. I'm yes. sorry to interject. Um, we feel like we can accommodate that right now based on the number of students that are electing to come back hybrid. Um, if those numbers increase and we need to evaluate that, we certainly want to accommodate as many students in our schools as possible. So we'll look at that, uh, that three to six if we have more students in than we feel like we need to adjust. Thank you. With the possibility of spreading COVID, what will the homework for the hybrid students look like? Will it be more online or paper? So we're gonna to try to use the online resources as much as possible. We do have recent guidance around paper um, assignments and such, as we will have to provide hard copies for those students who do not have the online access. So we're gonna be providing that guidance around collecting the papers back where the key feature really is about making sure that your hands are sanitized or that you've washed your hands immediately after handling paper. Thank you. My son is on the autism spectrum. He would not participate at the end of last year. I was able to get him to do a half hour of math and a half hour of ELA each day. Will he be penalized for not fully participating prior to his IEP being updated? Is there a possibility of him attending in person four days a week? So no, no special education student will be penalized for not participating. Um, we in the district know that this is a heavy lift for parents. Um, with all students, but particularly for our special needs students. Um, as when we meet with your individualized IEP team, we will be talking about the best schedule for your child. Thank you. We just moved to a different school within the district and haven't registered yet. Waiting on documents to register. Is the late registration going to be a problem to get the choice between remote or hybrid? It will not be a problem for a family that's new to a school but as soon as you're able to get that paperwork in, it certainly helps the school to um, plan. Will remote learning be available in the second marking period, even if we are in phase three? So uh, yes, remote learning is going to be available at all, at all times, even if the governor says that schools close to the in-person instruction. Is full remote learning two or three days a week? 
So remote learning and hybrid learning are five days a week. It's just uh, the synchronous learning, which will be the live instruction that your child gets, whether that be face-to-face -face in the classroom or live via Zoom from home, will be two days a week with the self-paced learning that your child can do to complete assignments, do reading, will happen three days a week. Will students have PE class? Um, they will have PE class and we just received confirmation from our public health liaison that if PE is held outside and students are six feet apart, they would be able to take their masks off only if they're outside. However, if PE is indoor, we would keep the masks on and try to maintain the six feet of social distancing. Will there be some type of training for parents regarding how to use Schoology? Yes, actually um, our instructional coaches are putting together a short instructional videos for all parents. They will be available in both English and Spanish that will lead parents through accessing all of our online platforms. What is the date for the distribution of computers? That will vary by school building. Uh, we will try to work together as a district, but it will be your school building administration who will contact you about the distribution. I chose hybrid, but would like to switch to virtual. Do I contact the school office or the district? Please contact the school because then they will log that accordingly into their records and you certainly may change to virtual at, at any time. Can we change the days the students will attend in person if it does not match the parent's schedule? How many kids will be in each classroom? So our bus transportation routes have been designed based on the number of students that we're going to have in person. And it would be very difficult to make a change to that at this point in time. If it does become a hardship, we recommend that you reach out to your child's school and talk to the building principal or assistant principal. Um, as for kids in the classroom, this varies by building, but on average with the social distancing guidelines that we're using, that number appears to be usually between 10 and 14 students per class. Can my child bring a lunch? Absolutely. Will students be going for full school days or half days? Full days. Unless they're pre-K. Right. <laughs> How will remote learning work? So remote learning is going to have the same opportunities as the hybrid learning. Your child will have access to two days of synchronous instruction. And what that means is your child can participate via Zoom in the instruction that your teacher, your child's teacher is providing to those students who are in, in person at the secondary level. Um, and for the three asynchronous days, those are kind of self-paced. Your students will be given a list of assignments um, that need to be completed or reading. It could be lots of different things, but they will be able to self-pace them through that, meeting deadlines for submission of completed assignments. And then we have a, a repeat question. The governor's latest modification waived the number of hours schools must attend each year. How does that affect the plan, making up delayed starts, et cetera? So it, again, um, it doesn't affect our plan right now unless the governor says that we can go fully open or whether we have to go fully remote. In terms of our district calendar, we have made adjustments to some of you know, professional learning days for teachers. There might be adjustments um, around, um, somebody help me out, I can't remember if we made an adjustment for students around Thanksgiving potentially? Uh, no, it was not. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Um, the calendar will be released to parents, um, and you will have that soon. And again, with the three feet and not the six feet, as Dr. Owens just stated, we are going, or we're going with the recommended six feet, um, but that will be revisited if it needs to be. Thank you. How often will students have breaks throughout the day from wearing masks? Again, We'll build that in as frequently as possible and, and base it on what we're um, seeing in our classrooms with students and, and really include teachers in making those decisions to be responsive. How will Spanish immersion work? Well, Spanish immersion will work just as it did um, when we were in person. So to, if your child is hybrid, they will have um, Spanish for part of the day and they will have 
um, their English partner teacher for some of the day. Schedules will be released and schools will be sharing that with you um, if you are an immersion school and have signed your child up for Spanish immersion. Will students be given COVID tests at school? So again, if we have a situation, we will assess it and then we will follow the guidelines from the Department of Public Health. They will be referring families to a site available to conduct testing and they will be communicating the process to make sure that parents understand the steps that need to be taken to ensure the child's safety and the safety of others. If your child is in cohort B, what would they be doing for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? How will they know what to do for the week? So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are the asynchronous days and teachers would always post the week's assignments so that students know them in advance. And you will see, particularly if your child is using Schoology and we will tr provide training for you on how to, how to see what is happening. Um, they will know exactly by week what readings, what problems, what assignments need to be completed. And on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday can work through those at their own pace. Specifically, how many hours daily, weekly are required on remote learning days? So we're, we're operating on the school schedule as it typically would be considering the bus routes that we have to make. There might be a five or 10 minute difference. Um, so students will follow their daily schedule. However, if your student is remote and cannot log into the live sessions, all of that will be available for your child to work through at their own pace. And then I believe we answered the question around masks around the neck. Again, we are um, requiring two ply masks. And if students need a replacement during the day, we will have them available. I believe we answered the Spanish immersion question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Found it difficult using the online material for my child. Has there been any change with the online material that needs to be done? So we are trying to st uh, stick to um, common systems at our various levels. Uh, K to two will use a platform called Seesaw and grades three through 12 will use Schoology and we will provide training to you on those platforms. However, if you continue to experience problems, please reach out to your child's teachers because there are ways that we can help you. What do you mean by two ply masks? Um, what we're really getting at is if you have a mask and you pull it apart, you would have like two pieces of fabric that come apart, which would make it two ply. Extracurricular clubs will be remote. I believe we answered that. We have a thank you for taking time out of our busy schedule to host this event. Thank you for the thank you. How do we get our home access information and how do new students get Schoology login information? So um, if you have already registered your child and did not get that information, then I would recommend that you call your child's school and ask to speak to the guidance office and they can provide that information to you. Schoology then, login information is provided by the teacher once school starts. Thank you. And then with Spanish immersion, they usually typically change classrooms. So let me just clarify. Um, it, the students won't be switching the classroom. It will be the teachers. Um, and that even goes for the upper grades in the elementary who are departmentalized. Um, it will be the teacher making the move and not the students. When will we receive school bus pickup and drop off times? Our transportation department is right now in the process of cleaning up all of the data from our survey and all the parent phone calls that have been completed to finalize the options for remote and hybrid. Information should be going out about cohorts. Renee, help me out. What date did you say? September 1st. September 1st, and it should be right around the same time. How will you be working with child care centers with school age sites? So I'm not really clear on. Uh, we've been question. working with our, we've been working with our local child care centers to see uh, how we can support them and we're uh, continuing to do that. We, we actually reached out to them today just to, to, to check on, um, well, some of them or to check on staffing and availability. So that's been an ongoing concern of ours with, with trying to locate childcare. Thank you. 
when doing remote learning, will they have the same teacher as they do in the classroom? Yes, that is the plan and that is the hope. <laughs> will students who use the hybrid model be able to be dropped off at school? Absolutely. And we'll have arrival and dismissal protocols that the school will, will share with parents. Will, pick up, will bus pick up and drop off be staggered? Yes, it, it will be um, according to our routing schedules. And then we will safely have students um, get on and off the bus in a socially distanced manner. Will students be informed that, that if they will pass their grade? So if this is a concern on whether or not your child passed um, last year, I would hope that, that your school has already communicated about that to you. If not, you may call the school. As for this year, uh, we will be monitoring students very closely and our hope is that we are able to work with all families that we won't have this type of situation. So if you encounter difficulties and feel like your child is not getting the support needed, please contact um, your child's teachers and or the school. Are they going to do an internet login run to see if there's a lag or a crash? So our IT department does runs like this often in schools, sometimes when students are present and sometimes when they are not. How about shuttle buses? A total clean will take a little time. Will this delay start of the day for the kids that ride that bus from the middle school to their school? So we will be building that cleaning time into our routing schedules to make sure that we communicate the times to families. And the number of kids on the bus is naturally shorting, shortening the routes. Excellent point, thank you. Will bus options be available for after school programs like Gigglebug Splash for both A and B students? We are actively working on this at this moment. Are children going to meet their teachers prior to school starting either via Zoom? So, um, Schools have been asked to hold open houses, and this is, could be handled on a teacher-by-teacher -teacher basis, or a school may decide to provide an open house as a, as a whole school. So just look for that information to come to you. Okay, and I think this might be a clarifying question next from a prior question. The work wasn't available online until Monday. That makes it impossible for us to prepare for remote learning and become familiar with what we need to teach. Can it be made available by Saturday? So we can certainly share this concern with teachers. I can tell you that our, um, what we would expect is that we're doing this on a week by week basis. So as school, for, as school materials need to be ready for the following week, there, we see no reason why it couldn't be posted on a Friday before teachers leave, but we will certainly discuss this with them. Will kids be able to be picked up from driveways of daycares to keep from loading kids up to go to and from bus stops? So I, I think I'm understanding the question around transportation. Um, it, if a student goes to the daycare and the daycare provider allows for that stop, then potentially we would have to work out the details with the daycare provider, um, but there are some if, if the student is not an attend, in attendance at that daycare, they don't want additional students and people congregating either. So unless the daycare provider gave us permission, the answer would probably be no. Will an iPad be sufficient for a first grader who will be remote learning only? Um, I will have to check with, um, I don't know, Charlie's on here if he can answer this, um, if an iPad is compatible with Seesaw. Um, if not, we certainly are providing Chromebooks. You, you will get a phone call from your school about distribution and you could pick up one of those. Just to add, in most cases, uh, the first grader uh, platforms will be compatible with an iPad, although we do prefer something with an input device like a keyboard or something. Charlie, can you just repeat that one more time? I, it dropped out on me and I'm not sure if everyone could hear. Apologies. Um, an iPad will most likely work for all um, first grade activities, but we do prefer um, that you have an input device like a keyboard. So we can always provide a Chromebook down the road if, it, if we find it doesn't work. Thank you. Thank you. Will hard copies of work be made available prior to the start of the school year? 
Um, prior to the start of the school year, I mean, it, it might be made available immediately before the start of week one, but not for the entire marking period. How will kindergarten and pre-K be instructed to use computers? This is a young age to operate one when most know phones or tablets instead. Well, we have built in time if your child is hybrid for the teachers to expose your child to the different digital platforms that we have. Um, and we recognize that this is going to be a lift. I don't know if Dr. Birdingham, you wanna talk about pre-K? So this is one of the reasons why when we, we set the hybrid option, this is, was one of our thinking into getting the PK, K and one in, getting them as comfortable with the technology platforms as possible because we you know, still have to consider that we may have to flip back and forth between our current schedules. So we will be working as hard as possible to get them comfortable with the technology. Also acknowledging that developmentally, a lot of screen time is not appropriate for them. So we're building in schedules that include lots of other types of activities. Around what time will school begin? So that's going to vary by schools, right? We would, our we times would are not much out. different than last year. So our times are about the same. Will, will parents of, if, of children going into kindergarten be allowed to see their child's classroom on the first day of school? At this time, no. Um, they will set up a virtual open house where the teachers are able to show you the room via Zoom. Um, schools will be communicating their open house um, day and time. We have a thank you to the admin team for all the hard work in getting our children back to school safely. Thank you. Is there a rule or order of what type of a face mask is allowed to wear? So again, it would be the two ply because that will protect um, your child from another child and it maintains the safety requirements by the Department of Public Health. Will the remote learning offer opportunities to break for breakout groups? Will a child who is struggling with reading be assigned work appropriately? Or on the flip side, a student who is reading above level be assigned work that will challenge them? Absolutely, at the elementary level, that's where those screeners that we do at the start of each school year provides us with valuable information so that we are able to address students' needs, whether they're on grade level, slightly below or above grade level. What supplies will be needed for remote only learners? So schools should be sending out school supply lists if they have not already. And we've been working with schools to make sure that we're only asking for those necessary supplies in that situation. If a family does not have internet access, are they expected to sit in the parking lot or a Wi-Fi hotspot area all day during synchronous learning? If a family does not have internet access. So, Synchronous learning for a remote student. If your child cannot participate at that particular time due to internet access issues, then I would recommend that you reach out to your child's school. There will be recordings of those instructional um, opportunities and we can potentially work with you to have your child um, get those. Will a third grader and sixth grader who are in a hybrid model be on the same bus at the same time? So that would be two different schools. So that could possibly be two different bus runs. It would depend on the route. Correct. Okay. How are you planning on handling elementary students exchanging masks? We're not going to allow for that, but we know we have to teach elementary students when they arrive, all of the guidelines. We have videos prepared. We have um, posters throughout the schools. The teachers will be doing much instruction around this as soon as we start the school year with children. Will sports activities be active now or will they not be available at the moment? So we get our guidance from uh, DIAA, the governing body uh, for the state, and we, there's a pause on the sports at this point. Uh, they're looking to open things back up in December with a winter season and maybe a condensed fall season after that, and then possibly a spring season. Will there be discipline enforced if a student isn't properly wearing their mask or refusing to do so? What is the plan? 
So again, we will provide training for students. We will push information home to families so that you're aware of what we're providing as far as appropriate um, wearing of masks. And then if a student is refusing to wear the mask, we will work with the family to ensure that we address that. Because again, if we're choosing hybrid, we all need to commit to keeping one another safe. And that would include wearing the mask except for mask breaks. Will children have unexcused absences if they are out for COVID? So, it so a it student would never be um, considered unexcused if there really is a case of COVID. That would count as a doctor's note would count as an excused absence. The most recent guidance says three feet apart, so why still do six? You could get more kids in. So again, three is the requirement, six is the recommendation, we will continue to assess that based on the number of students that we have in our hybrid um, learning situation that of course will be determined by families. Will remote children be able to pick up lunch at school? Should we also fill out lunch program paperwork? Yes, please make sure you fill out your paperwork as soon as you receive it because students will still be eligible for free and reduced lunch and there will be a, a meal delivery schedule coming out where students can pick up their breakfast and lunches for the week at various times um, that will be being advertised um, in the next few weeks. Will Dreambox and iReady be available again? We were told they would be open all summer. Yes, Dreambox and iReady will be available. If your middle school child cannot make their assigned cohort day for remote, can they log in on the opposite cohort day? So we are encouraging teachers to be flexible with this. And if you know that there's going to be a time that your child cannot log in at their assigned time, just let their teacher know and work out that your child attended a different time. What's happening with ROTC students? My child just got assigned to ROTC for marking period one and two, but ninth grade is not really even in school for most of marking period one. What about band and choir? Are these activities still happening? So in answer to the first question about ROTC, and this is the case for all subjects, um, remote learning will, will occur for all high school students starting on September 17th. And there will be opportunities at minimum two days of live instruction with those students just as there will be in the core content areas. Band and choir, right now the guidance we are receiving is that they can happen. It's just recommended that 10 feet be used as the social distancing guideline in those situations. And we actually have state of Delaware uh, representatives from the Department of Education coming to work with our um, band, choir, PE, all of those special subjects around guidance and how to do this remotely and in person. Will temperatures be taken for all people that enter the school? They will not be taken for all that enter the school, however, Every day we will do that questionnaire and any um, scheduled guest will do the questionnaire as well. And if anyone is feeling ill or reports not feeling well, we will send them to the nurse who then would be able to take a temperature. For students in the Spanish Immersion Program, will those classes continue? Yes. Mm -hmm. For the Howard T. Ennis students that are involved in out-of-school programs, will they be affected by the new schedules, work studies and horsepower? So at this time, for the safety and well-being of our students, we will not be doing community outings and job shadowing and work study programs for marking period one only at this time. Um, we will be revisiting that and we will be trying to recreate some of the programming in the building. If my remote only child misses a designated synchronous learning day, not due to sickness or is late in joining, will that be counted against her attendance? No, absolutely not. As long as your child is able to complete the required um, assignments and submit those for grading, then he or she would not be counted absent. And Candace says, bless you all and thank you for the time and effort you put into the safety and education of our children, praying for your continued health and wisdom. Thank you, Candace. Thank you very much. Is there a plan to assist child care centers with remote learning and with increased internet usage? Not at this time. Will the Zoom meetings on remote learning days be set times? Yes. Yes. They will My be. child and her friends have found class schedules online. Are these legitimate? 
<laughs> no, I'd have to say no on that one. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> okay, well, the open houses for virtu be virtual for high school students choice as well this October. So all open houses at this time will be virtual, yes. Will IEP therapies be remote or in person? It depends on what you selected as a family. For those families that are only comfortable going 100% remote, we will provide to the greatest extent possible remote. For those families that have opted into the hybrid model, um, we will try to get as many in person as possible. We also will be scheduling one-on-one -on -one appointments after school weekends and during the school day with transportation provided if needed to provide recovery services for services that may have been missed for some of those high level therapies that can't actually be done well. Um, virtually like physical therapy hand over hand physical therapy um, so we will be meeting with you and your family about each individual student thank you for the first day of school will there be more information if there are zoom meetings so, so you're more information for families yes yeah, so teachers will communicate their zoom links and the times that students can log in Will students receive a mandatory COVID test before starting school? They will not. However, if you are noticing symptoms at home, you certainly um, would want to engage in a COVID test. And again, um, the questionnaire prior to the school day would be your guidance document. If a child does become ill during the day, we would certainly assess in the nurse's office. Will there be banned? Yes, that is the, that is the plan. Will remote learning be available in the second marking period if we are in phase one? So phase one is when the governor recommends that all schools fully reopen. Um, so at the time, if that decision is made, we would have to kind of assess the situation we're in and obviously get input from our families. Will the district issue a functional student email address to facilitate direct communication with their teachers and guidance counselors? So what we've actually worked out is that our online platforms like Schoology has a messaging system where a teacher and students can communicate with each other. However, students cannot communicate with other students. So this is an option for you and your child to use to communicate with their teachers. Will Dreambox and iReady become available? It will. Um, students have been working on it all summer, but they were told, but they aren't on Clever Portal and Portal anymore. So let me just clarify. They were available most of the summer and they will be available again in the, uh, when we start back, but we did have to shut it down for a short time so that we can sync to the new classes and switch children grade levels as we approach the new school year. If a student completes all required work for the day, will they be given more? Woohoo, yes, <laughs> we can work that out. <laughs> <laughs> Will we be using the same platforms like last year, Seesaw, Flipgram, iReady, Dreambox? Yeah, we believe wholeheartedly that we don't wanna make changes for students right now. This is a difficult situation, so we're sticking to what we have. And will Christmas and spring break be as usual? Right now they are, yes. Can remote only families with kids in different grades request to have their siblings assigned to different cohorts so they can join on the same device on different days? So working this out for remote families is actually very easy. You can simply request this through your child's school. And we mentioned Spanish will, handle, will, ha will be handled as before half and half, they change rooms. So how will the cleaning be done? Well, and remember during Spanish immersion, the teachers will move in, not the students. So the students are gonna remain in the same desk that they've been using um, for the English part or the Spanish part, depending on which, which part of the day they start with. Will my child be in trouble if they cannot be in the live part of learning? No, absolutely not. not. Okay. We address the room change with Spanish immersion. immersion. How about shuttle buses? A total clean will take a little time. Again, we'll build that into the bus runs and the scheduling. Another thank you that we're doing a great job. Thank you. Thanks, JJ. Um, yep, thanks so much. Really helpful for first timers, thank you. 
Edward, a thank you from Allison. Will SDSA be having the arts curriculum? Yes. Mm -hmm. They will. Can my son wear a fully enclosed bubble suit as an, as an added layer of protection? So I'm thinking that's like a hazmat suit. That certainly would not be necessary based on the um, CDC and the public health guidelines. Again, the masking and the social distancing um, would be the recommended procedures to maintain everyone's safety. Will kids have to move from class to class in high school? Yes, unfortunately, because high school schedules, I'm sure we all remember from when we were in high school, um, we, all, all students follow different schedules. There's very uh, few times when the classes stay the same. They How will many students be, will be, oops, sorry. Oh, so sorry, Mrs. Blanner. They will be uh, marking, they'll be using marking tape to indicate traffic patterns and to keep students socially distanced during those transitions, however. Thank you. How many students will be able to travel on the bus at one time? So on our typical our, right, 72 passenger um, bus, we can fit 23. Uh, the slow roll-in allows us to really keep a close eye on how many students and ensure that they're spread out. So 23 is the answer. For our, for our, special, for our special school buses, it, 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 the number is much lower, around seven. Thank you. Why are other school districts able to offer five days a week in person for students and our district cannot? Based on our responses, we looked at, um, you know, the responses we got, we feel like that is our safe um, way to enroll student, or to move students back in um, on the AABB schedule. I can't speak for other districts. Maybe they have uh, a lot more students that are electing to go remote. Thus, the total number of students within their school is minimized. But based on our numbers, uh, this is what we feel is safe. We'll monitor it. If we can get more students in that want to come in for the hybrid model, we'll be able to do that. A thank you from KB to us for holding the session. Thank you, KB. Thank you. Sorry if I missed the answer, but have you covered student attendance and education procedures around family trips and or a vacation? So this will be handled the same as it is any other time. If you have a planned family trip vacation, then please just notify your school by using that form that can be found online and your principal will provide you the approval or if they can't approve it for a particular reason, they would notify you. Will the rec recording for this meeting be available for us? That is our plan, correct? Yes. Yeah. If a child forgets something, will they be allowed to, will I guess the parent be allowed to drop it off? And how will it be handled if a child is late on their hybrid day? So, so we're minimizing we the amount of people coming into the school, obviously, um, but you can certainly drop things off at the school. And if a child is late on a hybrid day, it would be the same. Each building will have their safety protocols, checking into the main office with appropriate social distancing. So the building administration and the front office staff will ensure that their, the safety protocols are in place. How many hours would, will children be online each day? So that could vary, but they're going to follow their school schedule on those synchronous days. Um, so they, it could be an all day opportunity, but please keep in mind that if your child is unable to stay logged in for the entire day through their school schedule, as long as they access the learning and the assignments online and complete those, they should be okay. And elementary is going to look slightly different um, because developmentally we know they could not stay online. A schedule will be shared with families who have chosen remote and there are opportunities for children to have breaks and even small groups. So uh, the teacher may be ha ha holding a live session with a small group of children and then at that time your child would not be on and that will be all be communicated through the teacher with you. Thank you. We have a thank you from the house, and then a question, when will district employees that are also parents of school age children know if district daycare is an option? We're still working with our child care facilities. We, we haven't been able to guarantee that we'll be able to provide that option right now. Um, certainly they can contact their, their building principal if they're having issues and we'll try to work with uh, individual families if we can. Thank you. 
I assume parents aren't allowed in the building. How do we coordinate drop off of school supplies? We will work on protocols for that for each school. And um, we do want to limit the number of visitors in and out of a building. That's going to be critically important. So thank you for understanding that. Thank Can you for all add? of our help. Oh, yes, please. I just wanted to add too that we have um, looked at school supply lists. So things that you have typically seen in the past where parents have had to show up dropping off those supplies, we are minimizing the list. So there will be lot, a lot less that students will be bringing in as well. Great point, thank you. Will middle and high school schedules also be released September 1st on home access? We're not sure if the actual full time schedule will be ready to be released on September 1st, but if it is, certainly. Will remote students participate in gym via remote instruction? Yes, absolutely. And fortunately, the Delaware Department of Education is providing our physical education teachers with um, a platform that does provide virtual fitness um, for, for remote students. Will my students have to move from class to class in middle school? Yes, um, for the most part they will, um, and cleaning will be done between those movements. Is the school lunch paperwork being mailed or given out on the first day? The school lunch paperwork is available on our website. Um, I will make sure that we post it on our social media as a special post as well. Um, and it's probably being sent home with the beginning of the year packets. If your child is fully remote, you could reach out to the building administration and have it emailed as well. But it will be available on the district website. Uh, what is the reason for not checking temperatures at school like daycares are doing? So based on our guidance from the Department of Public Health, we are um, directed to use the questionnaire, the self-assessment. And then again, if a student is not feeling well, the nurse may certainly take a temperature. Uh, thank you for all the care and safety of all the students and hope the best to teachers, directors, secretaries be safe. Thank you. <laughs> if a family chooses to vacation during the school year, will the child have to quarantine once they return? Fabulous that's gonna question. be- Yeah, it all yeah. depends on the state guidance. You know, it's, it's, that's been fluid throughout this process. So we would follow whatever the state's asking. Do I need to take my children's laptop to school to have information needed for learning installed on the laptop? So not necessarily because um, students will have access through our irsd.net website to all of the portals that they would need to access. Another thank you from Katie and Michelle. Thank you for your comments. Uh, thank you from Sarah. How about the arts classes at SDSA? Will the students switch classes? So at the secondary level, students will be switching classes. Um, classrooms will be clean between classes um, and we will follow all social distancing protocol when transitioning them. All right, team, are we at the end of the chat? I, I do think that is all the questions that have come in. I do, I'll handle the last couple, um, we'll take, uh, a couple more if there are there, but um, we have reached our time limit. Is there sports this year? The DIAA has uh, delayed the start of the season. Uh, it looks like December, we may be able to <clears throat> come back together with winter sports and then a condensed season for fall and spring after that is the hope. Uh, I think that's all of our questions. I wanna thank our community, our families. I think we had some students on here asking questions. That is absolutely amazing. We appreciate yes. all of you participating. Your questions were, were unbelievable and, and completely relevant to the work that we've been doing. Um, I personally wanna thank our panelists that joined us here this evening. Uh, we had planned for about an hour and I think we went about an hour and 40 minutes, but we, we wanted to answer all of your questions here. And uh, hopefully we've shown you that we're, we're ready for our students on September 17th and we look forward to uh, a unique and very different, but wonderful school year for 2020 21. Uh, thank you and have a great night. Thank you, everyone. You've been wonderful.